Now sitting beside me is Frank Bogdine, and uh, I was going to ask Frank if he would tell us uh, how he got into Rotary. How about it, Frank? Well, I became interested in Rotary because my father would take me to Rotary meetings when we were in Columbia, South Carolina, and I was at University of South Carolina as a student. He was involved into a Rotary Club at Five Points in Columbia, South Carolina. The club he belonged to was one that, oh, they were doers, and they were busy. They stressed 100% attendance, and many, many times during the year they would have what they called 100% meetings, where every member was expected to attend, and your name was worse than mud if you were not attending that day. Makeups weren't even considered for that day, but it, on other days you had to have makeups. So their attendance was very important and it got stressed to me also at that time. So in due course of time, I graduated and moved to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And the first president of the North Raleigh Club, the charter president was Lyman Kaiser. He was an insurance agent with Northwestern Mutual, and he was doing what a good insurance man does, which is canvassing for membership. And so being the next door neighbor, he was asking me, uh, was, would I be interested in Rotary? Boy, that didn't take but a moment for me to answer, yes, I would be. He said, well, come on and meet the fellows up here, and let's see if we can invite you to join Rotary. Well, I met, and sure enough, uh, I was invited right away. They had already chartered, but it was only a, a month or two earlier, and so I became a member of the North Raleigh Rotary Club, and they considered me to be a charter member. I think I'm the only charter member left in there now. So that's how I became a member of the North Raleigh Rotary Club. I had uh, definitely taken on all of the precepts of Rotary even before I became a Rotarian through my dad. The four-way test, the four avenues of service, and that service to mankind was what it was all about. So Rotary was very important. I remember practically all of the presidents, although some of the names are quite foggy now, but the names that are mentioned by Tom Owen, I certainly remember. I remember Phil Shadan being the, uh, well, he was the best golf player in the whole club, and if they ever got to force him up in the golf tournament, you better watch out because Phil would find a way to be the winner of it. He is still a crack golfer at this time, as I understand it. Um, well, let me... Uh, that's a time to stop. Okay. Um, <laughs> Phil Shadan, now that you mention him, we used to go uh, to Myrtle Beach, among other places, for conference, for the district conference. And uh, Phil always played golf at Myrtle Beach. And uh, I don't know whether he quit, but he confronted an alligator on one of the holes uh, on during one occasion. Phil, not to be daunted, went ahead and sunk the putt, but uh, the gator uh, gave him some pause when it came uh, to continuing to play. It, I, I've always enjoyed that story about him. I wasn't present, but uh, that was what he told. And maybe that was the explanation for his score, I don't know. Uh, Rotary, by the way, you should know, I'm sure you wonder why the picture is going up and down and jittering as it is, and there are noises going on behind us and beside us. Uh, we're um, in uh, northern Utah, uh, no, I'm sorry, Arizona. Nor northern Arizona, we've been in Utah. We were in southern Utah a couple of days ago, visiting the Grand Canyon and uh, the uh, desert country around here, and finding good places to uh, eat cherry pie and all sorts of things like that. And we're heading back toward home at this point. Frank, what are some of the projects you've uh, participated in over the years? Well, 
I have been a part of the projects where we um, have definitely been involved in road cleanup for the city of Raleigh. We have a, a dedicated two miles of Spring Forest Road that we keep cleaned up on a semi-annual basis. We have had the uh, Ryler project where we have taken youth for indoctrination into what Rotary is about and we've had projects where we've had Rotary scholars. We've had four-way test projects where we have gotten uh, youth in the high school level to write essays about what the four-way test means to them in their life experience and how they will use it. Let me change uh, the subject and go back to something you mentioned, and that's RILA. What that stands for is the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. And what the Rotary Clubs do is invite uh, uh, rising uh, seniors and juniors in, uh, from the high schools to go for a three-day weekend. Uh, the total uh, content is about leadership. And I used to attend occasionally and uh, do a video or uh, talk to the uh, people who conducted the program, and it was fascinating what uh, the kids said. Uh, I fully expect to find at least one of them to be in politics. One of them was telling me, and I asked a bunch of them to tell me what they wanted to do with their lives. And one of them said, I want to be President of the United States. Uh, sometimes I think he could, he could probably do a better job even then than what we have had of late. But that's a whole other discussion. I remember Phil Chidan and I got involved in uh, uh, the creation of the Rotary Park, which uh, is over off of uh, Six Forks, excuse me, Millbrook uh, Road. Uh, it, um, we sponsored it. Uh, I think the Parks Commission hoped we would spend a little more money on it than we have, but it is named uh, Rotary Park, not for a person, but for an organization. My experience with Rotary, and I've been at it like Frank, uh, well, I don't know what, how many years have you had, uh, been in Rotary, Frank? It's coming up on 49 years. Frank's 49 years, I'm about 43. Um, but what uh, I've commented to people about uh, Rotary, that if ever we have peace in this world, I think Rotary, Rotary will have a, a, a part of it. Uh, at least I hope we do. Uh, we try to do things. The, most of the guys leave their wealth or apparent wealth at the door. We may, as I recall, the club had several millionaires in it at the time, uh, the time I was up there. I had no idea until much later who they were. It didn't, you never noticed. Uh, we attempted to work together to do things in our community, both locally and internationally. The club I'm in now has a ongoing series of water projects in India which is interesting, and I've forgotten all of the projects that uh, Rotary has gotten into overseas over the years, but there are many. And the whole idea, it really comes back to the big biblical assertion that we should help each other. And uh, that's what Rotary does, that's the, the essence of it all. Frank, do you have something? North Raleigh Rotary, I guess one of our most notable projects that we got involved in through our governor and the former president is Matthew Kane has been the Guatemala Literacy Project where we have distributed uh, uh, textbooks to children in Guatemala who have never even seen a textbook before and it is a self-funding project because the textbooks are not given to the children. We provide the textbooks and some very heavy duty plastic bags that they are kept in between use and they are rented to the families of the children so that as the time comes when the textbooks are finally just about worn out, enough rent has been collected to buy replacement textbooks and so it's self-funding for the replacements. 
and we continue to provide more textbooks as it goes along. We've involved many, many more clubs outside of ours into this project for the children of Guatemala. As I recall, the uh, te textbooks only cost a buck a year. I don't know. I don't know the, the uh, cost nor all the logistics, but uh, many of our club members have gone down with the delivery of that. Watch out, vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. We've also, we're going to deliver a, a fully equipped ambulance down there, but we ran into a red tape log jam that prevented that from finally going down there. But the ambulance was finally delivered during the time of the hurricane damage in Louisiana down there, fully equipped, except that everything we had on it was uh, in Spanish, which was a little bit of a hoot, but it went down there. The story is told of uh, Eric Grunewald uh, going down there and he got into a log jam in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and was having a really hard time getting through traffic. So he finally flipped on the, all the sirens and traffic parted like the waters of uh, the Jordan and he was able to cut through and make very good time getting through traffic then in uh, Atlanta to get on down to Louisiana for that where they needed it. There are many more stories. Yeah, I'm going to quit on that one. Yeah. That's not me, but that's another president. <laughs> well, you're, uh, you were president, weren't you? No, not that. Oh, I thought you were. I started to allude to it, and then I couldn't remember. I was, I was the, uh, the last president of the Millbrook Rotary Club. Oh, okay. I'm the one who turned the lights out there, finally. Yeah. We've gotten down to a precious, about a, maybe a half dozen of us, and we decided it was viable. Yeah. That do happen. Well, we ran for 12 years. Yep. That was Bob Fields. Uh, yeah. Yep. Where is Bob? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, he passed. I didn't know. Yep. He was a great guy. Oh, yeah. He was, he was another general of a sort. Yep. He brought many people into Rotary from his church. Yeah. Editing, I think that probably will give you something. It should give him something. Uh, and that was what part of what we needed to do. Okay. Well, I wanted we'll to see help. if that meets part of the demand. Okay.